Sleepy Reader here, Damien. Uh, time, as I guess probably some whatever title I come up with will indicate to you, to share some of my bat, Batman, Bat Family, Gotham-ish thoughts with you. Uh, I wanted to talk about Batman, son of Robin, son of Batman, <laughs> Robin S O B as I like to call it, um, and uh, Batman Arkham Knights number seven, uh, and whatever bat thoughts spin out of those. Um, I'm not even quite sure what I'm going to say yet. And also, today I just picked up a big chunk of Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, just in some bins that I was looking through quickly, uh, at, uh, I think, uh, 70 cents a pop. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, I'll just show them at the end of the video. But, um, let's start with Batman Son of Robin. A really fun issue and I think fun is is the operative word with Batman Son of Robin it's not a lot of the emotional layers that I feel in this are because of my reading of Batman and Robin written by Tomasi and drawn by Gleason Gleason as the lone writer is a perfectly good writer which as as uh, Joshua Hayes Bat Josh pointed out in his most recent video covering this. I, hopefully I'll remember to link it below. Um, there's lots of times where bat artists have done their own writing and it has kind of belly flopped. Um, the big exception there being uh, Frank Miller. And this is not Frank Miller territory at all. Um, but Gleason is clearly a very competent, comfortable writer who understands his characters and has a kind of, it feels like he has kind of a braided uh, plot of different factors going on, um, much of which is revealed or semi-revealed in the second half of this issue. Um, I think f for me, I still am a little nervous that, um, that art will dictate to a certain amount. There's so many cool scenes in here, so much beautiful artwork. And um, it's a very good comic, but I can imagine another, and I can imagine even an even better writer doing this, if you see what I'm saying, that there's sort of the rhythm and pace of it is, I don't know, I just have this gut feeling it's affected by what Tomasi wants to do as an artist so that it doesn't flow the way, not sorry, Tomasi wants to, Gleason wants to do as an artist, doesn't flow the way um, it might have with a, with a different writer. So it's not really fair to say this could have been something else, except that we cruelly judge these artists who haven't been writers before in these ways. The other thing is there's kind of a, it feels potentially more of a, not really a kid book, but more of a resemblance to a kid book. It, it feels more th deeply fantasy than Batman and Robin did um, with, two, with a boy and girl uh, character in this wild backdrop um, as the main heroes and they're kind of have a slightly cute bickering back and forth quality and underneath good sentimental things will happen. Um, I have no complaints about that per se, except for all the frisson I used to feel from Batman and Robin with, with the more dense layers of parental and child emotion. There is parental issues in the background here. I mean, nobody, the young female nobody, the girl, has all kinds of issues with her dad, who is now dead. Um, and Robin's mom, uh, spoilers, This when I do Batman, it's always spoilers. So many of us out here talk about Batman that I feel like I can do Batman more in depth, I suppose. Um, in my other videos, I try to avoid spoilers. But spoilers... Uh, Robin's mom is coming back from the dead, or seemingly from the dead, um, with some very cool visuals, some stuff I don't quite understand, but maybe I've missed who the, um, 
the under is and who this sort of priest-like figure is who's rise, raising her up from the dead. But so the parental issues with Talia Ghul, who, who uh, raised Robin to be a vicious killer and an assassin, could be interesting or could be silly. Um, there's talk in here about Damien, my beloved, you know, and kind of wondering how that fits in with the fact that she killed him and made monstrous clones of him and always raised him to be a vicious killer. Um, I suppose that's her way of feeling love. I don't know. Um, just amazing visuals here. Uh, this, this book would be worth it alone, even if Tomasi's writing were weaker than it is. Um, and, uh, so we, the braids that I'm talking about are the relationship with the girl, nobody, who's like an older sister, or perhaps someone he will have a romance with when he grows up. Um, and this whole idea of his atonement for his year of blood that he did for his mom, and then um, his mom coming back, and then we see at the end, Deathstroke is going to be in the mix. Um, I sort of feel like that's all going to be in more for fun than for the emotional impact that I feel like Tomasi's, like I said, Tomasi's aim, his central aim seems to be more like a kid's fantasy book. Um, I love that kind of thing, so uh, no real complaints there. Um, when thinking in the larger Batman picture and the fact that there are all these parental issues, his father's not dead. <laughs> we know now that Bruce Wayne is alive but missing a lot of memories. But Alfred knows everything. How come, you know, this is just off in its own separate world, I guess. Um, unfortunate that the other Bat titles aren't off in their own separate world, I guess, also. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for more of this. I'm adjusting my sights to a different kind of Robin story. Um, I'm not taking it that seriously in a way. Um, it, uh, one of the amazing things is Tomasi's art just seems to stay at this peak, even though he's doing it every month by himself with, I believe, two more pages than he used to have to do for, um, for Batman and Robin. I love that, and the coloring is amazing too, certainly the coloring by, uh, I believe, John Kalish, uh, just even punches up the art even better. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I've showed a lot of these pages already. But it's just page after page of a visual pleasure. So, yeah, there's that. I think it's hard to let go because they kind of promise it at times of the idea of this cohesive bat world. But it, it seems like, for the moment, I have to accept Robin, Son of Batman is not really tightly tied in um, to the other bat books, which is ironic that I would even complain about that since I complain about the bat effect of being tied in, that books like Detective and Batgirl, the effect of those, and probably if I read it, Superman and Batman, Batman, Superman, and... Um, is there anything else? Yeah. Anyway, uh, that, that it seems to have on those things. Um, completely untied in is, um, Batman Arkham Knight. This was an excellent issue. I think my, if I were complaining, and I'm not really, my only complaint, this is, it's kind of lots of littler stories that are building up the background that leads up to this game, Batman Arkham Knight. So I think as I was reading it earlier, in earlier issues, you know, two and three and stuff, I thought there was more of a progressive story, or I was expecting a progressive story, and I think I've shifted my expectations a bit to expecting a story that gradually moves forward, but is also just sort of 
a bunch of little pieces that are building up a mosaic, and that mosaic's endpoint is not really the comic book, it's the game, um, which I probably, you know, will never have time to play, and I, I never played the original game either. But I loved the first mini story in here, um, which is a beat up Batman being taken in by an old homeless man who, um, I don't know, Batman has just done, the, the dialogue is done so well, the characterization, a whole, in, in the first ten pages here, which is what the first little mini story is, just creates a whole picture of Batman and of Gotham and of people living in Gotham and of the villains in Gotham. Um, it even says end here, even though in general they don't really sort of acknowledge in this print version that these are 10 page chapters that they originally print online. I have to say it's amazing how well these comics that have originally been our half pages in the digital versions uh, work as whole pages. You know, har I hardly ever, if ever, say, wait a minute, that, that page feels compromised, even though they can't do the double page spreads of like this uh, that uh, Gleason can do in Batman, Son of Robin. Um, so then this, the second story, which is to be continued, is the uh, the rise or gathering of this new suicide squad, not controlled by anybody, who is working as assassins for the Penguin. And uh, is the first person they need to assassinate is um, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> so obviously, lots of fun's going to ensue. But everywhere throughout, uh, the art is very enjoyable, if sort of in the shadow of Greg Capullo. But everywhere here, the dialogue is just fun. Batman just totally feels like Batman to me. Um, I like, I like the, the take on the characters in Gotham City and everything, as I've indicated. Um, there's, there's this hilarious moment where uh, Deadshot, is that Deadshot or Boomerang? is peeing off the top of a building, but it's just, it's just done just right. <laughs> if peeing off the top of a building by a, by a low-life villain can ever be done just right. Um, it just, you know, it feels funny and serious and intense. Another thing I like, and there's all these kind of odd quirks like that, um, like that people are trying to convince um, James Gordon to run for mayor, and it looks like he's taking that idea pretty seriously. I can't find that page. Um, and I have to say, I just immediately thought about when I saw Gordon, darn it, why can't I find that? How much he looked like I feel like Gordon should look, unlike the young, uber-fit guy that we're seeing in the current Batman. Um, yeah, he looks like someone maybe in his late 50s, and that's how I feel his role should be. I have to, there's this really cool moment where Batman is doing, or Bruce Wayne is doing these crazy chin-ups. Dang. I'm sorry, I shouldn't spend all this time thumbing through here. Anyway, um... Another thing that I really like here is that Batman is possibly still kind of a legend. People aren't really sure if he really exists or not. Um, the elderly uh, homeless man says, even if you don't exist, I believe in you because <laughs> you're what, got, what I want Gotham to have. Um, I really like that moment. And I like some other moments where um, Batman's a shadowy figure. And it made me think about twice from Snyder, once in Batman Eternal and then again in Endgame, uh, the whole city of Gotham acknowledges Batman, you know, we are Batman or we love Batman or various things where Batman is acknowledged as this beloved figure. And it just, 
doesn't sit right with me when I think of it. I mean, it's a powerful emotional moment, but in a way that's the end of Batman when everyone loves him and everyone believes in him um, because he should be in the shadows. He should be a myth to most people. Um, and, and he should be someone that most people or a lot of people don't believe is really a good guy, just a maniac in a mask or something. And when you tear that away, um, you take away something from Batman. And in the same way, Batman should be this human-sized figure fighting crazy, difficult criminals, but on a more human level, which is how it feels here. Um, because in, in like Batman Eternal, we found out he has these satellites that can show him where anyone is in Gotham. And he has a red sun a miniature red sun in a glove whenever he needs to fight Batman and some other really marvelous over the top wild sort of science fiction idea things that Batman has at his disposal which are really cool when Scott Snyder introduces them but somehow they reduce Batman for me um, and so those are the I keep punching against Snyder, um, even though a lot of his comics are enjoyable. So yeah, um, those are the thoughts that I had today while um, reading these bat books at my lunch break. After lunch, uh, sorry, after work and swimming at a pool with my family, we went to a pizzeria that is right next to this game shop that happens to secretly have tons of comic books in it, um, new and old. And it had these bins where the more you buy, the cheaper they sell you the comics for. Um, so half of what I grabbed out of those bins were uh, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. Uh, unfortunately, it's not like a, a full run, and I have, you know, like it's spotty over about... 60 issues. I've got 25 of them now. Um, although I also have other Batman Legends of the Dark Knight lurking about sort of unsorted from other other uh, splurges. So anyway, um, I always loved ba Legends of the Dark Knight because it was out of continuity stories. They lasted for three issues. They often two two, three, four, five issues, usually three or four. Um, they presented one creative team's vision for Batman, and then you moved on to a whole new vision of Batman. And I think that that, in a way, shares the spirit of Gotham Arkham Knight. Um, and I really like the most recent Legends of the Dark Knight, but, but I think that I, I look back to this series most fondly and I, I didn't get them all in the past but although I think I did have this one and a number of other ones here a long time ago um, I certainly I think for the first 50 issues or so back whenever this was in the late 90 or the late 80s early 90s uh, I bought a lot of these um, and then I fell off so but I think I want to have the complete Legends of the Dark Knight run eventually um, so this is one Part three of three with Bart Sears art. I do remember that. I was a Bart Sears fan at the time. Um, Howard Chaikin and Gil Kane. I may already have a copy, all of this, a copy of this one still tucked away. Um, so that's 24. Hopefully I have some of the other ones in there. Then we skip to 27. All of these covers are really appealing to me, or just about all of them. This one is by... I'm not sure who this one is by. It mentions a bonus feature, but it doesn't say who read it. Blades by James Robinson and Tim Sale. Um, so that was 32, and this is 34, so I need 33. I might already have 33, I don't know. Um, this is not art that I recognize. I'm, I'm less keen on this cover, Legacy or Mercy. One thing that maybe this kind of thing used to make more sense before graphic novels, um, the only way to get sort of a tight novel kind of thing was a miniseries, and this was an ongoing series of miniseries. Um, 
Mask is by Brian Talbot, so an artist writer. Um, that'll be interesting to see how that is. I don't think I ever read that one in the past, issue 40. Um, maybe that's just a, no, it says part two, so I need issue 39. <laughs> uh, this is a cool cover. So yeah, I this just presents me with lots and lots of gaps, but it's it's fun to build these up and search for the rest. Joe Kubert cover. Is Kubert the um, artist inside? I don't think so. Huh. Seemed unusual in this for the uh, cover artist not to be the interior artist. That looks interesting. I definitely never read this one. Alan Grant and Arthur Ransom doing Dow or Dow, the Dow of Batman, I suppose. Um, Mike Mignola, fifty-four. I do remember having this one at one point. Um, Mike Mc, McMahon, Mike McMahon. I liked his artwork style, definitely. Um, Definitely, up. these are fun covers. Crazy, crazy fun covers. Um, so yeah, I think I picked up that whole mini series, all three of them, written by Chuck Dixon, who's a writer that I, yeah, I'm always not sure whether I like him or not. A Dennis O'Neill, Edward Barreto, The Search, Quarry, Quarry The Search, I guess, sixty one. And on to another one. That's an interesting cover. Also, Terminus. Part one of Criminals with Mike Zek. And more of that Mike Zek one. I don't get excited by Stephen Grant. Maybe Stephen Grant wrote some good Batman, but I guess I missed it. So I think of Stephen Grant writing kind of filler material. Um, James Robinson again. That's a cool cover. Looks like a werewolf story. Well, it's called Werewolf. <laughs> I've got part one of three and part three of three. Um, and then I'm very curious about this. I've certainly never seen this before. Engines by Ted McKeever who's really quite a fringe artist at the moment uh, in the world of comics, but uh, they invited him in to do Batman, and here's part two, which I think this might be my favorite cover of the whole thing. So this almost has the look of maybe an Elseworlds kind of Batman. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm psyched for all this. I think right now I feel in the... I, for a while I was getting more and more excited about the new 52 Batman Bat family stuff. I was really enjoying Gail Simone's Batgirl. I was really enjoying um, Batman, and I was really enjoying Batman and Robin. And all of that excitement is lower for me now. And maybe it all unraveled somewhere in the middle of Batman Eternal. Because when Batman Eternal was coming out, too, then I was really excited at first. Um, so Batman's at a lower ebb for me with maybe you know, for pure Batman fun, Arkham Knight, um, and then at a lower ebb is, is the Batman title itself for me. But things always change, and I'm looking forward to it. Talk to you.